Here we are with Summertime Rendering Episode 7, and yeah, last episode we saw the viewpoint of Nagumo when she arrived at the island, and how her day, her first day basically, um, went, when she attended the funeral and everything, and met like the people from her childhood, and yeah, very interesting, we know that Mio is already a shadow at this point, or got a shadow at this point, from like one day earlier, and the same is pretty much the case with the parents of the little girl, so that's very interesting that it's like so far ahead, at a point where Shinpei can't even reach, right? So I guess we will see how that turns out now, and what um, Shinpei and Nagumo are discussing, what their plan will be from now on, because he can share all the information with her, what he experienced so far. So yeah, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe, or comment, let me know what you think, and I, and I would say let's get to the episode. Yep. Younger brother? Okay, she's going here. Is she killing them? And that's why they disappeared? Because she killed him? Ooh. But what did she say? Did you met your young brother or something? Something young brother, I have to rewatch that. <clears throat> so I guess it makes sense that she maybe kills them right because she is pissed about it that they fake their childhood friends and yeah they just vanished right and if she kills the shadows then they just vanish right they just like get absorbed into nothingness <clears throat> so it makes sense that it looks like that they just vanish overnight and went away oh no the little girl gets away because Shinpei had an encounter with her. So she gets away. Unless Shinpei is helping her now in some way and kills her so that she can't get away. <clears throat> because Shinpei would know that, right? If Nagumo had the plan before that she would go there and kill them, then Shinpei would know that the girl is still alive. Everything written down. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. A certain shadow. So it was only one shadow, maybe? Makes sense, yep. She already, already took care of it. <laughs> oh! Interesting! Okay, so there's only a limited amount, right? Ok. 
Okay. <laughs> Fifty four hours. I should have first. And it is. Mm hmm. Yep. Exactly. Okay, as I thought. Okay, here we go. What? E? A gun, some bullets in your head. Man, the kid controls them that are in. <laughs> the pulverized shadow on the ground, not suspicious at all. Uh, suspicious at all. God, oh my god, the whole head is gone. But why not the shadow? Mama! <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, hey, her younger brother. I have to rewatch this. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, I guess so. He? Is the girl already gone that she doesn't saw it? Dude, I'm confused. He, she, what? So, is he maybe somehow inside her and they can switch, kind of like Itadori?
Ooh, what the fuck? What the hell? <clears throat> I'm so confused. I have to rewatch this episode so badly. But why is she not dead? If she makes a copy, then she can kill her copy and she's immune. What? She's... What, she stepped herself to step her? Or maybe through her? What? No, eh? Huh? Or because the shoulder was on her. Dude, I'm so confused, what the fuck? Oh, a nail gun? Dude, I'm super confused right now with everything that was going on. So much dialogue, action, and then he, she, it. She stabbing herself, stabbing the, the shadow. There she is again. She knows. <laughs> is she can make a copy. Wait, what? What the fuck? Can all shadows do that? Booba! Where's Shimpe? Ah, Shimpe? He isn't nailing her! Oh. Oh, how do they know that? I guess experience.
So it's a new discovery? And the tree is weird. Not yet. Not yet. Imagine some other people come come out of their of their house and see that that they nailing a little girl. The end? Yeah, we know that. Eh. I guess he can't do it. Eh, no. Dude, this is so maddening. Uh. I guess so. Yeah, but she survived. Maybe she didn't deal enough damage to the shadow. I mean... Okay. <laughs> you talk too much. And back to Nagumo. Yeah. You have to stay focused. Mm. 
You better. <laughs> oh, they want to kill the fake Mew now? Uh. <laughs> Check her panties. <laughs> Curry. She tries her hardest. He can test if this is a real Mew or not by stepping on the shadow. It's the right one. Unless the shadow didn't mind being stepped on to keep up appearance. Yep. Another change. What the fuck, dude? What? Another big change. Like big, big. That she's suddenly... Uh, okay, man, what a confusing episode, I would say. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, I rewatched the episode and now I understand it. That uh, Nagumo has a dual split personality thing going on. Where when she ties her hair up, um, that she is Ryonosuke the younger brother and when she, then when the hair is down it's uh, nagomo <clears throat> i is this how it works if the hair is tied up or down if that's what triggers it very interesting it also seems like that ryu i guess it's ryunosuke maybe um that he can see a bit of the future we saw that when she fought the parents or he fought the parents that he could see like a glimpse into the near future where he saw that the mother shadow would attack her him her whoever and so yeah maybe it's and, and i mean how did it is it just nagumo having like some split personality where it's all nagumo she just thinks that it's ryunosuke or is it actually Ryonosuke? So that's the confusing part. Because with all the time travel going on and everything, it might be actually Ryonosuke that is inside her somehow, in a weird way. Uh, or maybe it's just her thinking that it's her brother. I don't know, that's a bit confusing, and I guess we have to wait maybe for some answers for that, or we will never find out. We don't know. And so, yeah. It's, it's very confusing, because sometimes... Uh, Ginjiro said he, then he said she, so it got a bit confusing with he and she, because it's basically the same person, and like, from the outside, and as Nagumo, it's she, but from the outside, and hair tied up, it's he, when outside, it's still she, right, so it, it gets confusing, because it's based on who is in the body, who is talking right now, right, but it's basically he, she, so it gets confusing a bit. And then there was a question, what make, like, if the copy is perfect, uh, 
and it's pretty much the original um right what's the difference i would say the difference is that the original wouldn't mass suicide with other shadows or the goal to awaken the shadow mother or whatever i would say that's the difference that the originals would keep on living right and wouldn't just be like beings that live for a single goal and that is like the shadow goal basically so i would say that's the difference right otherwise it's like just the facade is the perfect copy right that it can imitate the original perfectly and has all the memories but it's still like not the original right that's the difference because the originals weren't like hey at, fe uh, at summer festival just like mass suicide and like get all the energy of all the dead people to awaken the mother <laughs> so yeah i guess that's the difference um and i made some other uh notes after i rewatched the episode <clears throat> um yeah also interesting that once a shadow is dead it can't the person can't be copied again right so there's only so many copies so the amount of copies is basically limited to one per person and i mean so there are basically 7.2 billion copies possible <laughs> um, but i mean i i guess we can just limit it to the island right so that's still a lot um and i mean the problem is not only can the shadows make copies and it's i mean it's only like one copy and when the copy's dead it's dead but the copies also often kill the original so the person is dead dead right so it's completely gone the person which is a bit troublesome i guess um what i'm confused about a bit is that did i mention it or not in the last episode um ushio got a copy right and because there's a copy of ushio right but why didn't ushio got killed right then and there when she when they made a copy of her because we saw often that i mean alan didn't got killed right then and there when he when they made a copy of him i guess it depends on if the person is alone or not um i guess it depends if I guess it depends if the person is alone that they can actually kill the person quietly without someone noticing right i guess that's what it comes down to down to so i guess ushio wasn't alone so they couldn't kill her so they or maybe they had the whole plan worked out that they will use her right um but i mean no the girl the, the small girl was drowning for real and when ushio was saving her then the copy and then they made a copy of the girl and then they killed ushio so it's not it wasn't the plan so yeah i don't know i guess we maybe will find out or we don't i don't know um also interesting that ryonosuke that they ryonosuke and nagumo don't share memories because Na uh, ryonosuke has to listen to the voice recordings on the phone to get to understand like what the plan is right to know what his sister wants to do right which is very interesting that basically he is doing all the fighting while nagumo is not doing the fighting so i guess she does all the planning and ryonosuke is just like doing the fighting hmm and yeah i wonder how the dynamic really works is she doing the planning and he's doing the fighting or is i don't know i guess she's doing the planning and he's doing the fighting that's my guess right now um and yeah also interesting that the girl shadow uh survived the hit with the sledgehammer basically when you do lethal damage that should be enough to kill a shadow but in this case it didn't maybe because it wasn't lethal enough or maybe because there are shadows that are more resilient more resistant maybe hmm he said that maybe the information are not like conclusive enough like not clear enough that they need that there's like more 
towards it like that it's not just like lethal damage that there are maybe more conditions um, or like it's maybe based on different shadows like that maybe some shadows are special right and also interesting that if you nail a shadow on like three points that it can't move anymore that it's basically like locked to that position which is also very interesting but what what makes me wonder is when Shinpei grabbed her right and pulled her to the ground couldn't she just transform into a shadow and escape because she wasn't nailed at that point but maybe Shinpei like completely hugged her right maybe it covered enough space that she couldn't transform into a shadow anymore maybe that's basically the same as nailing three spots and that also explains why one nail wasn't enough that hit the shadow why it could like rip off from the nail because it wasn't three which is also like again very interesting how it works with the shadows um and yeah one another thing is like we now kind of confirmed that the shadow uh, that uh, mio in the kitchen at the end is not a shadow but what if the shadow just was fine with being stepped on not because of shadows like oh yeah i like being stepped on but in the sense of that the shadow is like i don't want to reveal that i'm a shadow right so maybe just like okay stay cool let him step on you right uh but i mean technically i guess the shadow shouldn't know that chimpe knows about it so it should have been fine i don't know i i guess we can just i guess i'm overthinking things maybe so i guess we can just say that that's the real mio it's fine and um yeah unless next episode of suddenly mio is not appearing in front of the house because i mean already something changed right who says that Mio appears in front of the house because right now Ushio is appearing in the house, which is already a big difference. So very interested to see how that turns out. But I mean, at least we know that we don't have to worry or fear this shadow, Mio, uh, Ushio, because she is not bad. She doesn't even realize that she is a shadow, at least from when we first met her, unless something changed, but I don't think so. So she thinks that she is the real Ushio right now. So. We see how that turns out, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, very interesting episode. Was a bit confusing with like he, she, split personality, dual personality, whatever. And very interesting, like more information on how the shadows work, right? So yeah, can't wait for the next episode, how this whole Ushio thing is going on. What's happening with that? Uh, what's happening? What's happening with that? Jesus Christ and to see if they kill the fake Mio, right? That's a big thing, that would, be, that would be a big step because then Alan is safe, Mio is safe, the fake Ushio is not a big problem and then it's only Shinpei that can be copied. So at least his family is almost safe completely. But yeah, if you like what you see, or if what you saw, leave a like, subscribe or comment, let me know what you think and I would say thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.